You know what? 8 out of 10 people worldwide can't see the Milky Way anymore. And in just 100 years, it might turn into a forgotten tale from the past. It's not that the galaxy is disappearing, but that the cosmos is fading from view. Back in our grandparents' day, they could look up and see this vibrant tapestry of stars. But nowadays, we're lucky if we can even count them on one hand. This has nothing to do with nature. It's all because of the creeping threat of something called light pollution. Next time you walk around a big city after dark, take a moment to notice the large number of street lights, neon billboards, and office buildings shining all night long. Those endless city lights create an artificial brightness that competes with the natural glow of the stars. This is light pollution, and it's getting worse. Every year, Earth gets 10% brighter. That means if someone is born today in an area where you can typically see around 250 stars, when they reach 18, they'll only be able to see about 100 of them. Unfortunately, that's already a problem in big cities, where looking up at the stars is becoming something that you can only do in planetariums. It's gotten to a point where, during an earthquake that knocked out the power in Los Angeles in the 90s, many residents called emergency centers to report a massive silvery cloud in the night sky. But what they were actually seeing, perhaps for the first time, was the Milky Way. When you look at Earth from space, you can see vast areas of North America, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia all lit up. Singapore, Qatar, and Kuwait are some of the most light-polluted countries. On the flip side, remote places like Siberia, the Sahara, and the Amazon rainforest are in total darkness. Light pollution shows up in many forms. First, there is glare, like when you're driving and those bright lights literally make your eyes hurt, leaving you very uncomfortable. Then there is clutter, like Times Square, with its crazy mishmash of different bright lights all over the place. Light trespass is when light sneaks into places it shouldn't, like a street light shining right into your bedroom. And finally, there is over-illumination, which is just using way too much artificial light for no good reason, like keeping all the office lights on throughout the night when no one is even there. All these forms of light pollution aren't just stealing the beauty of the night sky. They're also interfering with astronomical studies. When we rely too heavily on artificial lights, it messes up the work of Earth-based telescopes. And when that equipment can't do their job properly, we end up needing even more expensive space telescopes like Hubble and James Webb. And let's face it, that costs us billions. Turning night into day actually affects all of us, not just astronomers. Nighttime light messes with our sleep schedule and our body's internal clock. This clock keeps things like brain activity, hormone levels, and cell functions on track. So when it's disrupted, it can lead to serious issues like depression, insomnia, heart problems, or worse. One key process that gets messed up is the production of melatonin, a hormone that kicks in when it's dark. Too much light at night lowers melatonin levels, leading to stress, anxiety, headaches, and sleep deprivation. Blue light is the main villain here. You might think that turning on night mode and getting that orange glow in your phone screen is enough, but it's not. Blue light is also present in LED bulbs, the kind we use at home and in city lighting, because they're cheap and energy efficient. My point is that blue light is basically everywhere, and it's a real challenge to avoid it completely. This is also a big part of why we're not entirely sure how bad light pollution is nowadays. I mean, some statistics suggest that this issue increased by 49% over 25 years, up to 2017. But the real figure may be even higher. The thing is, blue light has shorter wavelengths, and the satellites we depend on today struggle to detect it accurately, meaning they don't quite capture the full extent of the light pollution caused by LED lights. Animals are lost and confused too. Their sleep patterns are also affected. A study from Germany revealed that blackbirds in urban areas are getting active much earlier than those in natural habitats. They wake up and start singing up to five hours sooner than their country cousins. Migration behaviors are messed up, especially for birds like sparrows and thrushes who travel at night. You see, they rely on the moon and stars as their internal GPS. So you can imagine how disoriented they get 
when they spot something like Las Vegas' massive sphere, lit up by 1.2 million LED bulbs. The intense brightness hides stars and disrupts their navigation across thousands of miles and continents. And it's not just that. Artificial lighting is unfortunately causing more birds to crash into skyscrapers and high-rise buildings. Insects, like mosquitoes, are also affected by light pollution. Yep, they're kind of gross, so it might not bug you if they're attracted to artificial lights and uh, meet their fate. But remember, they're a crucial food source for many animals, like bats or frogs. So disrupting their populations could throw off entire food chains. Nighttime lights are causing problems underwater as well. Marine creatures near brightly lit panels off the Welsh coast are changing their behaviors, and fewer sea squirts and sea bristles are hanging out near those lights. Another example involves sea turtles. They typically lay their eggs on beaches and often return to the same spots for years. But when those beaches are too bright at night, female turtles might become confused and decide not to lay their eggs there. Now, do we really need all this light? It's hard to say. Some people might feel safer at night, while others think the opposite. You see, it's usually the glare that messes up our sight. Here's an example. If there's a super bright lamp blocking our view, say at a gate, we can't see anything but the light. But check this out. If we partially cover the light with our hands, suddenly we can spot an intruder. Wow. What I mean is that more lamps don't always mean more safety. It's all about using them the right way, and doing things like dimming lights can actually enhance security. Plus, it could save you some cash. Speaking of which, light waste has a pretty big impact on the economy. Take a Cobra Head street light, for instance. The light projected directly by it is only 30% of the total light it emits. In the US alone, roughly one-third of the light at night goes to waste, and that adds up to a staggering annual cost of $2.2 billion. Electric lights aren't all bad, of course. They have done some good stuff for us, like making our days longer so we can get more done and have some fun after work. But we can totally minimize this issue. Turning off all the lights would be awesome, but let's be real. That is very difficult, if not impossible, these days. So what can we do? Get those fancy controls like dimmers, timers, and motion sensors to make sure our lights are super efficient. Go for warmer colored lamps instead of those harsh blue ones. Oh, and consider using fully shielded light fixtures, like those cool vintage table lamps. They direct the light down where you need it, so you don't get that annoying glare or light scattering everywhere. Plus, when you cut down on wasted light, you're not just helping out the planet, you're also saving some cash on your electric bill. Talk about a win-win! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.